Anderson. And as you can see up here, I have a couple different roles. Um, I'm kind of coming at this as uh, I, I'm a, an associate lecturer for uh, CP125, or Counseling Psychology 125, which is our uh, introductory course for freshmen, um, one of many of them. Um, and I also work here at Do It Academic Technology and as a strategic, oh my gosh, this is going to be, it's a, my title just got big and I can't remember, Senior Strategic Learning Technology Consultant. <laughs> okay. So um, that's kind of what I do and where I come from. Today, John kind of characterized active teaching labs as something where we come and experiment and work with Canvas or especially this semester and I tell you a story about what I tried and what I maybe had a hard time with or learned from it. Today is, is not that day. Today's version of active teaching lab is kind of like the doing laundry version of household chores. You got to get it done. You got to stay organized um, because it helps you, it helps maximize the time you can spend doing other things, right? I wish that I really did apply that in my day-to-day -day life, but con uh, conceptually that's kind of what we're coming, going at. So in a former life, uh, I was a librarian, uh, and, a, and part of that was learning about how information is organized and why we organize information that way. Now, some of you who are web designers are going to already kind of get some of this background information, but let's just start with the human mind. Human minds like hierarchy. It's part of our cognitive evolution because it helps us do some things. It helps us categorize. That's a cat. That's a dog. So there's some categories. <laughs> It shows relationships. Is that a cat or a dog? I have a palm at home and we call it a cat dog. But it is a dog, right? It helps us stay organized and it stimulates recall. Oh, that's a cat. It's a kind of cat. It is a kitten cat. So it belongs to this category. There's also another category. This is a pet cat. This is not a pet cat. And our ancestors <laughs> needed to know that that's not the pet cat, that is the runaway cat. So that's part of the stimulates recall. And that's part of the reason um, sociologists and cognitive scientists think we enjoy hierarchy and categories and things like that. Because it helped us, helped us keep us safe and understand what was good for us, what was not good for us. And if you think about how little kids learn, if you've watched them learn, or if you've even watched Sesame Street, there's the song, one of these things is not like the other, that's what that's about, categorizing. Websites don't follow that logic. That's not how they were designed, right? When it first, the uh, evolution of the uh, internet kind of came around, it was all these various web pages. I'm a web page, or I don't even think you could call them pages. Web, we'll call them web objects. I'm a web page, I'm a web page. I'm a picture file from Google. I'm a picture file that I uploaded from my computer. I'm a multimedia video. In order to get these things to become a website, we have to impose some order. And because we like hierarchy, it makes sense to impose a hierarchical structure on it. So we impose that structure by kind of making things linked to each other. That's the traditional way we make websites into websites, not just these disparate objects. So that we have a home page and that we have some sub-pages that all talk to each other. And we can call in picture files. We can call from outside of our website picture files, and we can call in multimedia from outside of our website too. So the internet has um, made that possible. Here's what you need to know about Canvas. Canvas is a website. We call it a learning management system, and part of that is because it does some things that is learning management system like. But its basic logic and principle is a website. And Canvas has made things a little bit easier. We don't necessarily have to make the links to all the disparate parts unless we want to, and that's the way we're going to design our Canvas page. But mostly, what Canvas does is puts things in a box. It puts it in this box of your course site. And your course site has some design that you really can't mess with. That's just the way it looks, right? And then it categorizes things. So we have assignments. And certain things can be assignments, or they can be viewed on part of the assignment category, or they can be on their own, like quizzes and discussions. You can see you can link to those and go right to those. But you can also create those from the assignments. We can get into that if you haven't, not today, but in a future session. 
we have this place where we upload files. We throw all the things we want our students to read. We throw our images. Uh, we can throw PowerPoints and things like that. We have pages. Those are the pages that you can create in Canvas. They're the HTML pages. They're really a web page. And then we can put them all into something called a module if we want. But all these things can operate on their own as well. That's kind of the beauty of Canvas. So we can put files into modules, or we can just view them on their own. We can put pages into modules. We can put <coughs> files into pages. And we can put assignments into modules. And we can also put assignments, oops, that was what that's supposed to do, into pages, depending on your structure. Did I lose anybody there? OK, good. So pages are just a web page and you put links on it, right? Modules are a box where you also put links. So that's kind of the gist of that. So let's look at this in Canvas and think about how we can, we have not, we don't have a lot of control over the organizational structure of a lot of these pieces of Canvas. But we do have uh, organization, organizational control over files. And the reason that I think it's really important to think about organizing your files is a couple of reasons. Number one, we like to categorize. That makes things easier to find, right? It makes <coughs> things easier to uh, work with. In Canvas, it's actually much easier in your workflow to have things organized in files. And I'll show you why in just a second. Um, and the second reason I'd say, especially if you're going to be bringing a class over from D2L, which many of you will be, or you're supporting people who are bringing classes over from D2L. And these classes have a lot of legacy in them, right? Maybe you have syllabi from 2008 and 2009 and 2013, and you didn't want to lose those because there's some good stuff in there, and it's just been, but you haven't really thought about it, and it's just been sitting in D2L. Or you have massive PowerPoints that you don't use anymore, but they take up a lot of space. And this is critical to think about, because when you move all your stuff from D2L or Moodle, over into Canvas, and there'll be people that help you support that if you aren't going to do that on your own. Um, you only have one gigabyte of space. You don't need to know what gigabytes and megabytes and, and kilobytes and all those things mean, except that video files and PowerPoints eat up a lot of memory or space. So it's smart to prune and smart to think about ways of organizing your files so that your course actually can be in Canvas. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like in Canvas. I'm going to pop up my training course. It's not very pretty. I haven't done a lot of this. <coughs> Every time I do something with it, I just wipe it clean. So I don't have a lot of design on it right now. Um, but that doesn't really matter because what we're going to look at and start with is files. So for this pretend course, I have uploaded all these files. And if you can get them a little bit bigger, and just kind of take a look at those for a minute. Does anybody notice how Canvas organizes their files? Terribly. <laughs> <laughs> Alphabetically. <laughs> now, I don't have a ton of files, so I can still find a whole bunch of stuff. If you are moving, you have lots of readings and lots of different things, it's going to go in alphabetical order. So every time you want to use that, put it in a module, put it in a page, you have to go through the whole list alphabetically organized. Now, if you are the kind of person that is really, really careful about how you name your files, that's really nobody, just <laughs> but maybe, maybe there's one or two of us out there that takes really a lot of time to uh, organize our files um, and give them really precise names, that, that'll be, that's fine. A lot of times they come in as like image number one, image number two, PDF here, or uh, screenshot number one, screenshot number two, or they have these names that are not really telling you what they're all about. So um, that's the other reason you might want to organize a little bit. So organizing is not terribly hard. We'll get to the. Okay, reset. Here we go. Um, over here, you'll notice this is called the root folder, and it just has your course name on it. We're going to make a subfolder for this. And I have a couple different syllabi that I want to keep, so I'm just going to make it, call it the syllabus folder. You'll have to think about what makes sense for your own course. OK, so now I have a syllabus folder. Where'd you go? 
was supposed to have. You so. just clicked the X instead of the check. I did, thank you. <laughs> I can just hit ret uh, return. There it is. So now I have a syllabus folder. And I can easily drag and drop this syllabus from 2016 and the one that I'm currently using, 2017, into the syllabus folder. Right? And now you can see the root folder has these subfiles. You could make like course information folder and then have a subfolder under that called syllabus, you know, basic fo folder creation. Um, again, what works for you? You might want to have a folder called images. And then, yeah. Can you drag a folder into a folder? Let's try. Because mm -hmm. what she said, if you were like, I made my syllabus folder and like, crack, so I'm going to have a course information folder and then move the syllabus folder into that afterwards. That's a smart idea, Bridget. Let's do this. So I have uh, images, and let's make a folder called Unit 1 Images. Oh. Let's see if we can put it in there. Come on. Go, go, go. Well, let's just pretend I'm putting this in this. OK. And let's open it. And there it is. So yeah. So it is drag and drop. That makes it even easier. <laughs> so you can stay really, really organized. and. Like I said, in my prior life, I was a librarian, so I think about things as like, here's the subject, here's the subsubject, here's the, or kind of in Dewey Decimal form or what, what have you. And things get smaller and belong to different, more uh, discrete groups. Okay. Can you rename a file after it's been uploaded? You can. Let's go back to that. And over here is this little gear. And right here, if you click on it, you can move it. That's another way to do it if you want to drag and drop or you need to, or if you have um, a limited uh, physical ability mm -hmm. with your hands, you can move it that way. Um, otherwise, you can download it, rename it, or delete it from that little doohickey. And you'll see that gear wheel all over campus when you need to do something with it. OK. Will it let you drag and drop you know, one images and the images down over the left hand? Like this? Oh, that's a good idea, too. <gasps> Look at that. Did it? What if you try to drag it into the icon that's right below it? Yeah. You mean this? No, no. Right below it. Oh! Nope. Not this time. It just feels like it should. But I could... When I go into syllabus where that is, <coughs> that's another option where I can open that folder and then for this folder, instead of dragging and dropping it, moving it in that way. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, making folders is, is no big deal. Um, but I want to show you why this is important. If I pop over to pages, I'm going to make myself a HTML page or just a page in Canvas. And I add a page here. I think I have one already. Open that up. And I want to edit it because there's nothing in it. This is how you plop pages into Canvas. You have files over here. And I can just click on it. And there's a link. Link to it. But if I want to put an image in, I have to have images already uploaded. They have to be pre-uploaded. So you might go over here and say, I want to embed this image, and I want to add some stuff to it. So if I click on that and I don't have any images in there in Canvas, then I can't do anything with it. So all images have to be uploaded to Canvas first. So when it's pulling from the images, it's pulling from anything that says JPEG or GIF or something? Or is it pulling from the file? Cor they're all under course files. That's why I made an images folder. Back in the old days of Dreamweaver 2000, you had to make an image file. Um, this you don't necessarily need to. But here's why I think it's important. If I click on Canvas and I have a lot of images, I can go here to course files now, and now I can get to images, and now I can find the right one. And by doing it that way, I can put some alternate te text in so that a person mm -hmm. using a screen reader can see it, and I can f make the dim dimensions. Maybe I want them a little bit smaller. That all text stuff is important. You can't, in B2L, you had to do it. It was forced. In Canvas, it's not forced, but it's still very important to do that. OK. So that's part of the reason, I think, organizing for your workflow if you're making pages. 
But a lot of people will just be making modules, right? Yeah, we can leave. And throwing things into modules. And it's kind of the same idea. If I have a module over here and I want to add a file and I don't have them organized, so I'll go to file. Here they all are. And if you have tons of course files, you're not going to be able to necessarily, you're going to have to scroll through them every single time. So what I can do is go over to add a file. Oh, come on now. And you can see that now I have little folders that I can add that from. So all the course files, but I can now scroll down and just see everything in their folders. If I want to create a, so cancel. If I want to upload a file from this point, so I can go here and go to new file. Now I get to choose right from the module what folder I want to put it in. Right now I only have two folders, but you can see how that would really streamline your work process. And it only goes one child down on the drop down not to the subfolder, like the whatever unit one image is. Good observation. Thought it did yesterday. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it did yesterday when I tried it, but. And maybe it did yesterday, I and mean, that's <laughs> 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 oh, 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 you're right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's true, Canvas does update without warning. <laughs> A little bit different than T2L. Um, Okay, so I guess it does only go down one. But at least it makes scrolling a little bit easier. And you can go back and do your housekeeping a little bit later, if you'd like. Okay, so that's the basic gist of file management in Canvas. Not so hard, but it's, it will help your workflow if you do do it. Um, a couple of the other things that we want to uh, talk about a little bit is, now what do we do if we, don't have, if we have really big files? How do we manage our really big files, like our videos, <coughs> and like our, um, maybe you have a really big PowerPoint, and you don't, and it, you're hitting that limit, your one gig limit, pretty quickly in Canvas. So you know about the one gig limit? You don't have a lot of space on your <laughs> Canvas course, so using these external tools is great. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I want to just show you a couple external tools, and during the playtime, if you haven't ever used the tools, we can walk through that. I don't want to take away from your playtime um, <coughs> too much. But we've got, I've got a couple different ideas for you. First of all, we have a campus system to manage a couple of uh, multimedia files, basically audio and video files. And that's called Kaltura. So you'll hear, hear us talking about Kaltura. And Kaltura is integrated into Canvas. So if I have a page that I want to uh, put a video on, There is a little button up here in our editing bar called Kaltura. And if I click on that, it should take me to my Kaltura space. <laughs> I'm looking at Dan. Is that it'll, it'll, it'll get there. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I have some videos, and let's say I wanted to do something really exciting and <coughs> contradictory to what we're learning, and I put <laughs> my video <laughs> using the gradebook in D2L. And so it plops it in there very easily. You don't have to necessarily have everything in Kaltura. You can use, if you see this little drop down, carrot, um, you can add it right from YouTube. You can add from Vimeo. Uh, that's for another day if you don't know what Office Mix is. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, and Google Apps, so that takes you right to your drive, your Google Drive folder. So, like, mm -hmm. so this really kind of implies that you need to have a completely separate hierarchy of organization, like in Kaltura and in Google Apps, because otherwise it sounds like if you don't have everything really solidly organized, you're going to drive yourself insane trying to <laughs> find anything to put in your course. That's the theme of, that's the basic theme of today. <laughs> How to not drive yourself insane by being aggressively organized on the front end. 
again. I get it. I know that I don't always do that either, but then I am, go insane when I don't do that as well because I can't, and it really disrupts the workflow. So yeah, we do, that's just kind of the way of the web right now, right? Before you close that, the Google Apps integration just came out, was turned on last Monday. So when you talk about oh. Canvas changing things without really much notice, every two weeks they will <coughs> update it incrementally versus with desire to learn, you would wait a whole semester, a whole year, and then be like, I think we were like three versions behind what was actually yeah. new. So this is a different way of thinking about things. So what about Box? Oh, I was going to just show you that. That was my next one. Nice right. oh, wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 wait. So <laughs> the Google Apps integration works pretty well. If you have documents that are shared with you, those will not show up unless you've already moved them to your drive. So if it just shows up in Google Drive as shared with you, but you didn't like actually add to my Google Drive, it's not going to show up there. So this only shows what's in your Google Drive. It also depends on which Google account you have linked <laughs> under your account. So under account settings, you might have a personal uh, Google account, or you might have a risk.edu Google account, or you might have some other Google account. Um, you can only link one, so I recommend using those version because that has unlimited space. Is there a like a secret site place you can go to on the Tuesday after those Monday updates to find out what they actually did, or do you just have to intuit it from looking at the things? <laughs> Very good question. There is a Canvas community which I'm sure we'll be talking about all semester that you can give to, and they have release notes that come out very regularly. Yes. And the nice thing is they usually do like a three to four minute video. Oh, cool. So if you don't want to kind of scan through the three pages of text, they kind of have a more friendly overview of what they can do. And they often link on how to use videos, on how to use each of those tools as well. So it's a, it's, it's a nice support source. Mm -hmm. Integrations are ad happening often. So what you did not see there yet was a OneDrive integration. That is coming. There's Office 365 integration that will be coming as well. I don't know when. What about Storm compatibility with the Captivate file? Is that? I'm going to let Dan answer that one. Was that this year? So the answer is you can import Storm objects. We can report grades to the gradebook. There's a big but in there. You can't get score reports. So if you want to see detailed feedback on what the student got right, what the student got wrong, you're not going to get that in Canvas. <laughs> so I will give you a kind of a preview. There's a, I'm working with a number of great colleagues on campus. I'm trying to figure out how what I what some of the potential solutions are. <coughs> Essentially, we need something kind of standing up along with Canvas to help us kind of gather and store that data. And we don't have, there's no kind of current solution for that right now. So we're kind of trying to figure out where is the best place to go for that sort of thing. This is an exciting adventure that is unfolding in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing, the whole thing. <laughs> Analytics is a big deal to a lot of people. So it's such a big deal to a lot of people. Companies like to sell us back data that we've collected. So that's <laughs> kind of part of the politics behind it. All right, box. All right, box. Finally. Margie, one thing real quick. Yeah. Um, back to the files, and I just was playing in my sandbox. You can do multiple uploads at one time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you mentioned that, and I missed I it. I didn't, but thanks yeah, for you picking can that up. Highlight a whole batch of them, and they'll import some. Into the files, not to, not to the. Perfect, which makes the life a lot easier. All right, so if we go to box, there's also a little box integration. And slowly, I have to log into box. Mm -hmm. It's very secure. And just log in, and one of the nice things about the Google Apps integration is it lets you both link it and embed it directly. So if you're doing a course schedule that you want to be able to change pretty rap rapidly, having it in Google as a Google Doc and then just embedding that lets you actually go into Google very easily, make some changes. You don't have to upload or download or re-delete anything on your Canvas account. You can just make the changes and it's automatically 
sharing the type of seat for single sign. And you can set up permissions so that the students can comment on a section or that they can edit it if you want to have a embedded sign up sheet, for example. Um, things like that. So whatever permissions you set up in Google Drive, you can have them the embedded thing. So one, one more thing on the cloud thing, I just tried to import a whole folder and eh, so. Yeah. One of the, on the community site, there is a place for you to share ideas. You can plop it right up in there and people can upvote it and the more upvotes you get from, and this is all over the country and probably the world, the more upvotes you get like, hey, can you design a way to put a full file into there without yeah. The community site is really cool because it's not just instructional technologists that are there. These are instructors who are using it, who have real use cases, who have, are somebody there has struggled with exactly the same problem that you have. Oftentimes, instructional technologists, we don't often get a chance to teach courses, so we don't know about the use cases that you might have. So it's a great source for real <coughs> So theoretically, so don't use box, basically. No, I think Dan's plugging away at something. It could be the way that I'm signing in, um, but we'll get back to you on box. But there is a button there that's supposedly. Well, and as you're doing that, sort of all the integrations that are happening now, um, because I think we're on the seven-year record schedule or a 30-year record schedule, and the question of what, do, where do I put stuff? for what purpose or move it kind of is tied to longer time frames than very rapid schedule changes. Like are, are any of the integrations tied to procurement contracts? Like how long, what's our contract with Office 365? What's our contract with Box and our Heltura? Does that even, who knows that? Who do I go to? The CIO. Oh, just that's Bruce. Okay. And then he'll set well, he'll let if you have, or somebody at that office, or maybe John at purchasing. Oh yeah, like just go to whoever like purchasing do it. is for okay. do it. Okay, that's like the stuff I don't like to think about. No, I don't. Me either. No, like, I know. In the big picture, it's like I don't want to move something if it's just a, like a one-year renewal mm -hmm. and then move on to something else. Like if it's, but if it's three, five, seven, maybe. I don't. I just can only speak from what the tools that I know. Yeah. Not many of them have one-year contracts. They're more like. Three, five, three to five, seven, yeah. Okay. I was able to log into Box. Just oh, good. Just so you know. It just must be me. Box and I are not good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if it's because I have a, my net ID doesn't match my actual, like, because they're using my maiden name from, like, 20 years ago. But. Um, anyone can talk about the instructor's files? Yeah. When students upload files to be scored, how does that come? It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. So they can upload videos too. I would recommend they upload a video to Aura if they want to do that. But. Okay. And then does the instructor have any responsibility to maintain those files for a certain amount of time? Do student work files go away eventually? I, my, my suspicion is it's no, no more than you would have a responsibility of taking care of their papers after they've handed it in. They do, like, they get the. A student assignments in D2L are usually, they're not there after the semester ends and the course is closed. Right. Right. Okay, so what we're learning is, li like all of us here in doing Canvas right now um, and learning about this, a lot of, I will be frank about myself and the way I've been able to support it, it's kind of like being a teacher in a new course and you're one chapter ahead of the kids. <laughs> right? <laughs> Just stay one chapter ahead. So can't, uh, that's why it's great to have these kind of situations because we just don't know everything yet. We haven't tried everything. We haven't even considered certain scenarios. Um, so that's why I want to stop talking and let you guys get into it. If you want, oh, I'm going to volunteer Dan, <laughs> myself, John, <laughs> Julie's back there, uh, a number of us who have worked on Tour or some of these other things, to, we can just play with stuff and experiment.